You don't always need a professional when it comes to setting up a network or extending one's Wi-Fi connection. The goal of today's video is to prove to you that even absolute beginners can set up an access point, or for short, AP on their own, even when paired with a switch. That's coming from me, someone that can practically be considered a zero as far as networking and Wi-Fi are concerned. Let's go! For your average home, you'd most likely pick up a simpler access point. But for companies, be it smaller or bigger businesses, future extension options are important. Meaning that you basically could additionally connect all kinds of network stuff in between. Now, even though we're looking at enterprise and overall professional devices targeted towards businesses, I'll give you a great example that even this at first glance mess is actually fairly simple, straightforward and easy to set up. For the access point, I'll be using the HPE Aruba Instant On AP22 today, basically a product by the renowned brand Hewlett Packard Enterprise or for short HPE. Besides the AP itself, there's also included a mounting bracket for wall mounting, a flat ribbon type ethernet cable, as well as some paper documentation. Since today's AP22, in my specific case, does not come with any power supply or source included, this access point will have to rely on a PoE switch for power. In itself actually an advantage, since there's only one cable leading to the AP that way. Two birds with one stone, I guess. However, in order to be able to provide both power and extend one's internet connection to the AP, you will require a PoE-capable switch. PoE standing for Power Over Ethernet. That's what I'll be using today's HPE Aruba Instant On 1930 managed switch with 8 pieces of gigabit as well as 2 pieces of SFP ports for, along with 124 watt PoE support. All that will be operated completely fanless. As far as what comes included, a power cord, rubber feet waiting to be attached, wall brackets along with screws for getting all this attached to the wall, and of course some exciting documentation. So now you're aware of and introduced to what we're dealing with today. Let's get started with the setup now. If your access point does not come with any power supply, make use of your PoE capable switch. Now, depending on your preferences and plans, plug in an Ethernet cable directly from your modem or router and connect one of either devices with your switch that can provide power to the connected devices. If you happen to own an access point that does come with a power supply, you will not necessarily need to hook up a switch in between. Either way, you will have to connect an Ethernet cable coming from your modem or router to your access point. In my case, the Ethernet cable in question will take care of two things simultaneously, namely providing data and power, therefore will be connected to set PoE switch. Make sure to connect that one with the power cord. And now we've already completed the part most people are scared of. All devices in question should now be connected to power and be turned on. Depending on the devices and how complex those are, booting up can take a few minutes. These days we are often guided through the necessary setup steps via apps. So it is recommended to install the Aruba Instant On app on your phone for today's devices for instance. The following steps will now differ slightly from brand and product, but at the core everything should remain fairly similar. In my case, I'll have to create an account. Following that, a new so-called Instant On site needs to be set up that basically groups your networks and devices together. Next, you'll be given the choice what exactly you wish to set up. While I do have a switch connected in between, today's goal is to simply get the AP up and running, which is why I choose access point. Now you'll determine whether you'll be hooking up the AP directly to your modem or to your router. Then we are prompted to connect all necessary cables, a step we've already completed beforehand. As far as these Aruba Instant On devices are concerned, they are ready to be connected only once the device's LEDs flash between amber and green. For the next step, we'll have to enable the location service on our phone, or at least allow it just for the app. Make sure to set it to precise. Following that, we are asked for our access point's serial number. 
mostly you'll find that one either on the back of the device or, as in my case, directly in the front. After a quick search, those connected devices will be detected without any issues. So we'll add these to our so-called site. Now we can finally name our extended network. That's the SSID and set a Wi-Fi password for it. These are the details clients and users will connect to your Wi-Fi with. Next, we have to enter the country and or region. And only a few seconds later, everything's practically already set up. You'll just have to make sure, especially with certain enterprise and professional devices, that all connected devices have successfully synchronized with each other. Oftentimes, that's done automatically in the background without the user being required to do anything here. Just give all devices a bit of time when first setting everything up. The connection should be all good and running stable then, with the Wi-Fi successfully extended. Of course, depending on the brand and device, you'll either be graced with more or less customization options and even ways to monitor your network. Aruba Instant On seems to be offering lots of options we can dive into. This also includes forced bandwidth limits as far as download and upload speeds are concerned. You decide who has permission to access the network and who doesn't. And a feature most access points come with, the option to go with 2.4 or 5 GHz or even both frequencies. Oftentimes, you could further enhance network security, but that's a little too advanced for most of you, including myself. As said, you'll be able to monitor network traffic and how much data is being used, and especially by whom and what kind of sites are being visited. My point I'm trying to make is that good access point solutions that today's Aruba Instant Onset surely seems to be a part of offer lots of use cases for extensions and the like. These advantages, needless to say, are not only limited to this brand and product series, though. As a matter of fact, usually the more you pay, the more additional features and options you're getting. The concept of setting up such devices remains fairly similar across all those devices, though. Sometimes you'll be going through these steps on the PC, on the phone, or even both. The whole topic surrounding access points, therefore, is not a complicated one, even though my instructions may or may not be a little messy. Nonetheless, I hope I managed to somewhat give you a bit of an idea on how this all is being set up and wish you the best of success and luck with your Wi-Fi extension. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone.